Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Kasim, and today I've got a long-term review of the M1 Mac Mini. Now, before we get into all the fun details, check in the description down below so you can jump to your desired section of the video. So I've had my M1 Mac Mini for eight months now. Initially, I did a review two months into ownership, and with a rumored M1X or M2 Mac Mini in the works by Apple, I wanted to share my experience so you can decide whether you should upgrade now or maybe wait for the new model. Now, first off, let's start with the price. That is probably one of my favorite things about the base model, which is what I have. So in the base model, you get an eight core CPU, an eight core GPU, a 16 core neural engine, and then you get 256 gigabytes of storage. Now you might be thinking that, hey, Kasim, like, why not I just go buy a 24 inch iMac, which has a beautiful 4.5K 24 inch screen, a keyboard, a mouse. I mean, why would I go for this base model M1 Mac mini? Now, first of all, you have to keep in mind that the base model iMac 24 inch comes in at 1299. Now that one only has a seven core GPU. It has the eight core CPU, but only a seven core GPU. And if you're somebody that's relying on an ethernet connection, then that doesn't have gigabit ethernet. So in order to match the specs of the base M1 Mac mini, you'd have to go to the 1499 model. That is a good $800 more. I know you're getting the keyboard and mouse and for some of you that might just work. But this, for its price, you're getting a whole lot of computer. Now, I myself like having the versatility. So if you're coming from a previous Mac mini setup where you have a keyboard, where you've got a mouse, you've got a monitor that you love, then this is going to be great. You won't have to switch anything and you can just throw this in your setup and you'll be good to go. Or you could be somebody that's coming from a PC and this is your first Mac. You already also have all the needed peripherals. You just need a computer and this is a great place to start. This actually brings me to another thing that I love about the M1 Mac Mini and that's the versatility and size. Now what I mean by this is that first of all, it's a tiny computer, which means that if you're someone like me, who has a smaller desk setup, then this is going to fit right in. Like I have it standing vertically off in the right corner of my desk next to my Xbox Series S and it's great because I don't have to waste any extra space with a larger computer, etc. Now, in terms of the versatility, what I mean by that is that, for example, I had a 27 inch monitor here before I actually got this ultra wide monitor. So you can make changes to your setup at any time. So having this computer, you can pick your own monitor, you can pick your own keyboard, you can pick your own mouse, trackpad, whatever you wanna use with it. Now in the beginning, in my initial review, I did have some Bluetooth issues, but those got resolved. So I can actually use my Logitech keyboard that I had in my previous setup with this M1 Mac mini. So I don't have any of those Bluetooth issues. Matter of fact, it even works with the HomePods now. Now, another thing is, is that knowing myself, I'm probably going to be making changes at some point. Like I know that this has been performing so well for me that I might get a much better monitor. So just knowing that I can make a change or even if I do replace this, I know that I can take this and throw it into a smaller desk setup in the house and I'll still be good to go. Now, my next topic is kind of a funny thing to mention, but it's something I've observed. That is silence. I'm gonna be quiet. You hear nothing, right? It's, it's pure silence. And you might be thinking that, hey, this computer isn't even working right now. It's just on recording the audio that's coming from the mic up here. But trust me, this is how it is all the time. There's times where I have to put my hands behind the computer to make sure that the fan is running. It is indeed, but it's so efficient. The M1 processor in this thing is so efficient that 
the fans never have to kick on. I have a 13 inch 2018 MacBook Pro that I work off sometimes in the day. And if I'm doing video editing on that, those fans go crazy. And that is still nothing compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro that I had prior to buying my M1 Mac mini. So as silly as it sounds, the silence of the M1 Mac mini is another thing to love because you'd be surprised that just the silence of this machine and just being able to work in silence without feeling that your computer is about to blast off into space is pretty nice. Now imagine this and follow me please on this example. If I was to take a room and put a fruit in each corner of the room and ask you to run to one corner, pick up the fruit, run to the next, swap it with that fruit and so on with each corner of the room. If you continuously did this, you'd get tired, you'd eventually get exhausted, right? Well, that's how a traditional layout of a computer worked. You have different components in different areas in constant communication. So that communication is you running from corner to corner with bits of information, right? Now, imagine this. If I placed four fruits on this table right here, right all dead center next to each other, and I just told you to continuously swap them with each other, that would be really easy, right? Well, that's what the M1 chip has done. It's brought all those components and unified them on a single chip. And that's why it is so efficient. That's why it's so silent. That's why the performance is so great. Hopefully this example can help you understand how the performance and efficiency is improved in an M1 chip as opposed to a traditional computer. Now the performance for me has been absolutely great. Two months in, I had no issues, and another six months in, a total of eight months, I've got nothing to complain about. The only intensive thing that I do that you might not do is video editing, and that's from footage with my iPhone 12 Pro. It's 4K footage, so I haven't worked with anything like 6K or 8K footage, so I can't say that this base model is going to be great for editing that kind of footage. But other than that, I do everything you do. I browse the internet, I watch videos, I listen to music, I work on my website, I edit photos every now and then, especially if they're thumbnails, but that's all. So if your workflow isn't that intricate and this is going to be enough for you, then you'll be fine. Now next I'd like to talk about ports and whether or not they are enough for me. So you've got two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, you've got two USB ports, you've got an HDMI port, an Ethernet port, and then you also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now for me personally, this amount of ports is more than enough. The only things directly connected into my M1 Mac Mini is this monitor via HDMI, an external SSD via the USB-C cable, then this microphone up here via a USB cable, and then my USB hub. So that has multiple USB ports because I've got two external hard drives, I've got a printer, so that's why I attach that to the computer. And that's all. Other than that, I don't use any of the ports. Now, if you're somebody that has something like an SD card or maybe you need more USB-C ports, there's plenty of hubs and plenty of options for you and you're just gonna have to spend a little bit more to attach that to the M1 Mac Mini and you'll be good, you'll be totally fine. Now, should you buy this M1 Mac Mini or should you wait for the rumored M1X or M2 Mac Mini? There's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. First of all is that price that we talked about. $700 for a base model computer with so much power is absolutely amazing. This new rumored M1X or M2 Mac Mini, it's gonna have more performance, but it's also going to come in at a heftier price. $1,000 to $1,100 is what I've seen to be rumored. So you have to keep in mind that if you don't need that kind of performance, 
if you're not doing things that are that intricate and that intensive, then you're good with this. Matter of fact, I think the refurbished ones go for $589. $589 is absolutely a phenomenal deal to get on this much of a computer. I like to be practical in the sense that if I don't need the performance, then I don't need to upgrade it. Yes, I will be if there's a big change with the M1X or M2. I obviously will be buying it to show it off to you and others. But practically, this performance does everything I needed to do. You know, this computer has been great for everything that I need to do. And there's no need for me to change it. So I can't tell you to go out and just buy that one and spend more money. Analyze your workflow and buy for your needs. You know, from the ports to the design to the price, take all these things into consideration and buy something that you're going to love and it's going to work for you. Now, for me personally, let's say tomorrow I get a camera that shoots 8K footage and I come here to do video edits and well, if it doesn't work, then yeah, I'll have to make a change. But until then, until things change, until I need more performance, like I mentioned earlier, I love the fact that this is such a great computer that I know that I'm good for a couple of years. And what's nice is that I know that the monitor might change. I might change this keyboard. I might change this trackpad or the things that are working with the computer. But the M1 Mac Mini, that's going to stay right where it's at because it can do everything it needs to do for me. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions or you'd like to say anything at all. And most importantly, take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video.